live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live 2018. Brought to you by Cisco, NetApp, and theCUBE's ecosystem partners. Hello, welcome back everyone. It's the live CUBE coverage here in Orlando, Florida for Cisco Live 2018. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Stu Miniman, three days of wall-to-wall -wall live coverage. We have Manny Whaley, Senior Director of Developer Experience, Cisco DevNet, and Par Marat, who is the Senior Director of Community and Ecosystem for DevNet. Andy, great to see you, CUBE alumni. Every single time we've had the CUBE with DevNet team, Par, great to see you. Congratulations, Thank first you. of all, thanks for coming on. Thank you, we're happy to be here. Congratulations, so really kind of a proud moment for you guys, and I want to give you some mad props on the fact that you guys have built a successful developer program, DevNet and DevNet Create for Cloud Native, over a half a million registered, engaged yep. users, of uh, developers using it, not just people who come to the site, Correct. real right. developers. For an infrastructure enterprise company, that's a big deal. Congratulations. It is, thank you, thank you. We're, we were just chatting this morning about you know, the really early days of DevNet at Cisco Live and the first uh, year of DevNet Create, and it's been great to see that community grow and see, you know, early on we had this vision of bringing the application developers and the infrastructure engineers together and cross-pollinating those teams and having them learn about each other's fields and then build these programmable infrastructure-enabled apps. And that's really, that synergy is happening within the community and it's great to see them exchanging ideas here at events like this. And so we love to talk about like, you know, um, seminal moments, obviously DevOps drove a lot of the cloud and Chuck Robbins, your CEO said, without networking there'd be no cloud. True statement, absolutely. But Stu and I always talk about like the role of a network engineer and that the power that they used to have in the enterprise, and still do, used to be the top people running the networks, mission critical, obviously security, but it's not about a retraining. It's right. about a, a, a path, and I think what you guys have done in, in success is you've shown a path where it's not about pivoting and being relevant and retraining to get yeah, a new job. Right. It's been an extension exactly. of what they already know. Yeah. And I think that's very refreshing, and I think that's the real discovery. And, and we've, we've been able to grow because I think in our foundational years, we really spent a lot of time providing the content and the skill training, and what Mandy likes to say is we met them where they are. Yeah. So there, no question was too novice. Uh, likewise, if they were a little more advanced, we could direct them and point them in that same direction. So those early years yeah. where Mandy, we were just reminiscing about the first DevNet. Uh, Coding uh, 101. Yes, exactly. Yeah. She wrote it over the weekend <laughs> and we rolled that whole event out literally in three months. And what yeah. year was that? Just kind of, this is important. 2014, moment. May of 2014. 2014, the seeds that we should do something. Yeah. And you guys have had certifications, we're looking at CCIEs, you go back to 1993 all the way now to 2018, so it's not like you guys are new to certification and training. Right. right. It's just taking the IQ of network people right. and giving them some insight. Yeah. So what happened in 2014? Take us through the, obviously you bootstrapped it, Yes. <laughs> what, happened what happened next? We did. Everyone's so, like, whoa, we can't, we're not, we're, we're staying below the well, stack we, here. We, we knew right. there was a lot of buzz around SDN and programmability, and, and we both, actually, I should even back up further. We were both on the DevNet team when the DevNet program was PowerPoints. So we weren't even right. when we there were just yet. planning what it even could be. Right. Like the idea of Cisco having a developer program. And like Par was saying, we knew SDN was coming, we knew network controllers were coming, uh, we didn't know what they were going to be called. We didn't know what those APIs looked like. But we said, the network engineers are going to need to know how to make REST API calls. They're going to need to know how to operate in Python. And so we started this program building around that vision um, before the portfolio is where it is today. Like today now we have APIs across the whole portfolio, data center, service provider, enterprise, and then up and down from the devices all the way to controllers up to the analytics level. So the portfolio is really filled out and we've been able to bring that community along with it, which has been great. I want to dig into the north, south, east, west and that whole kind of the, the, the cloud paradigm, but I got to ask you on a personal question relative to the DevNet success. Was there a moment where, actually the same one was 2014, was there a moment where you're like, wow, this is working? And like, the, <laughs> you know, pinch me moment or is, um, was it more of, we got to get more resources, this is not just, well, this it's always flying. that. That's that's always the challenge. What was the we point where you said this lean. is actually the best path? It's working. Yeah. Double down. What was that happening? Um, I mean, I think after we started teaching those very early coding classes, I, I got this 
like flood of email from people who attended them that said, I took this task, I automated it, it saved my team months of work. And, um, and like getting that flow of information back from the community was early signs to me from like the technical level of there's value, this is going to take off. And then I think we just saw that kind of grow yeah. and grow Mushroom and grow. Just yeah. kept going. The other thing that I heard from a network engineer which really resonated with me was you were saying the network guy or gal likes to be there and solve the problem and they're sort of at this you know deep level of control. And what I heard them say about the programmability skills was that that was another tool that they added to their sort of toolbox that let them be that person in the moment solving that problem and they could just solve it in a new way. So hearing the network engineers say that they've adopted programmability in that fashion, yeah. that let me know that yeah. that they that was going to work, I think. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so let's get into some of the meat and potatoes because you guys have some really good announcements. We saw you have the code um, ecosystem that you announced at DevNet Create, which is your you know, emerging cloud native worlds coming together. Um, that's available now. Yes, so it's take a minute fully to, released. So give, give us the update. Yes, so uh, DevNet Code Exchange uh, is developer.cisco.com slash code exchange. So you can go there, it's live. And the idea behind this was we wanted to make it easy for the community to contribute and to also to discover code written by the community. So it's on GitHub, you can go and search on GitHub, but you get back a ton of hits if you go search Cisco on GitHub, which is great. But what we wanted to have was a curated list that you can filter by product, by language. I sometimes joke that it's like Zappos for sample code, because you can go on and say, you know, I want black boots, you know, the two inch heel. You can say, <laughs> I want, uh, I want a code for DNA Center or ACI, yeah. and I want it in Python, and then see all of the repositories submitted by the community. Yeah. And then the, com the community can also share their code, say, I've been working on this project, I'm going to add it to Code Exchange, yeah. so that other people can build off of it and find it. So it's really about this community contribution, which is a strategic initiative for DevNet for this year. Uh, yeah. Mandy, how does that tie into other networking initiatives happen in the industry? I think of uh, Open Daylight, a lot of right. stuff happening, Docker Cons this week, Kubernetes, yeah. and networking's a critical piece of uh, all of these environments. Yeah, so some of the projects that you'll find in Code Exchange are things that relate. So we have like some really good open source community projects around Yang models and the tooling to help you deal with Yang models. So those might be in Code Exchange, but those are also part of the Open Daylight community and being worked in that. So because it is all open source, because it is freely shared and it's really just a, a way to improve discoverability, we can share easily back and forth between. So Code and Share is designed to really help people peer to peer yeah. work together and reuse code, reuse the, code in the classic the open source ethos. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so Par, you have something going on with Ecosystem Exchange. We do. Okay, so it sounds like Code Exchange, Ecosystem Partners, it's, matchmaking service, it, what is it? Well, it's, it's, kind of the, explain. it's kind of the next level up and what I think we have to understand is when we've got Code Exchange and Ecosystem Exchange under the umbrella of Exchange because within our 500, half a million community of developers, where they work, what we've found is predominantly at SIs, at our VARs, at our ISVs. So these are the builders. So Code Exchange will even help that persona because they can come and see what's already been built. Is there something that can jumpstart my, uh, my uh, development? And if there's not, then they can work with, the, with each other, right? So if I am looking for a partner, a, um, a VAR in Australia to help me roll out my application, my navigation application, which needs to know and get data from the network, I can partner through this exchange because I can go in, see everyone, and be able to make that connection digitally versus organically. And this really started, you asked earlier, what was one of the pinnacle moments? Well, at these DevNet zones, what we found is that an ISV would partner and start talking to an SI or to a VAR, and they'd start doing business planning. Because what this is all about is driving those business outcomes yeah. for our right. customer base, and we're finding more and more they're trying to work together. So you're enabling people to get do some work together but not trying to be a marketplace where you're actually charging a transaction. Correct. It's really a kind of a matchmaking. This is all about sort of discovery right community now. Community-driven discovery around right. business. Right. Yeah, it's interesting, I heard a story in the hallway um, about DevNet, because I love to get the examples of, you know, and we love what you're doing, by the way, but love to get the examples. Overheard a guy saying, we were basically cratering a business. Jumped into the DevNet program, 
and turned it around because there was deals happening. So the organic nature of the community allowed for him to get his hands dirty and, and leverage it, but actually build business value. Yeah, that's exactly that's a right. Huge, that's, that's a exactly huge, right. that's a huge, that's at the end of the day, people love to play with code, but they're building something. Right. for business purposes or Correct. open source projects. And, and that's what this is about. It's really transitioning from the, I'm going to build, to now there's business value associated oh, with that's it. Right. Yeah, and, I, and that's spectacular. I think so much of my career, you, you talk to you know, the, the, the poor network administrators, like, oh, oh, I'm going to lock myself for a month and I'm going to do all this scripting, and then you know, three months later the business comes and asks for something, I, I need to go do it again, because it, it's yeah. not repeatable. It's what we, we say is that the challenge has been that undifferentiated heavy lifting that yeah. too many companies do. Well, that's that's exactly it, and the interesting thing, especially around intent-based networking, is that's opening up a whole new opportunity of innovation and services. And one of the things that is very much different with our ecosystem exchange is it's the whole portfolio. So we have SIs in there as well as ISVs, and most you know, marketplaces or catalogs really look at it in a siloed version. Yeah. Oh. I have one example of kind of the two coming together that's really interesting. So um, Meraki, which is the, the wireless network, has really great indoor location-based services you can get from the Wi-Fi. And then there's been ISVs um, who have built indoor wayfinding on top of it, really great applications. But those software companies don't necessarily know how to go install a Meraki network or sell a Meraki network to something like this, you know? And so it's been a great way to see how some of those uh, wayfinding companies can get together with the people who actually go sell and install and admin Meraki networks and but come together, because they would have a yeah. hard time finding each other. And, and the example is actually rolled out here at Cisco Live. Yeah. We've, um, Cisco Live partnered with an ISV to embed a cloud-based service in their app, which is navigation. So you can go into the Cisco Live app, tap on the session that you want to see, a map will come up that will navigate you from where you are here to get there. And this is, I think this is the second largest conference yeah. center in the United States. So like having that it. map yeah. is really I've gotten important. Lost we, we, we've all got the steps to prove <laughs> yes, uh, that, exactly. that, that is, but yeah, and, and that actually brings, one of the questions I had was, is it typically some new thing? Is you know, it's new wireless rollout, some SD-WAN discovery, or is it core networking, or is it kind of across the board it's, as to when people get involved? It's definitely both, yeah. it's definitely both. Um, I mean, from the code exchange piece, like I've talked to a lot of customers this week who are saying, we've got our core networking teams, we want to move towards more automation, we're trying to figure out how to get started. And so we give them all the resources to get started, like our video series and then now code exchange. And then I heard from some people here, they actually coded up some things and submitted it to code exchange while they were here because they had an idea for just a simple like, quick automation piece that they needed and they were like, I bet somebody else needs it too. So it was definitely that. I noticed you guys also have your Cisco team. I was talking to some of the folks there, patents are being filed. So internally at Cisco, it's kind of a wind of change happening. It is, where, it is it's exciting time. I mean, it, IOT cameras, I just saw a solution in behind us here where you plug a Raspberry Pi hardware prototype to an AP, makes the camera a video, you no, know, it looks yeah. like facial recognition, right. saves the metadata, right. never stores video. Right, right. Um, so this is Pretty kind remarkable. of the new model. So final question I want to ask you is, as you guys continue to build community, you're looking for feedback, the role of integrating is critical. You mentioned the Cisco example about going to market together. It used to be, hey, I'm an integrator of our solution, business planning, okay, and then you've got to go to the Cisco rep, and then they're just located. More and more it's coming together. It is. How are you guys bridging that, those two worlds? How are you tying it together? What's, yeah. the, what's the plan? So we're, what we're finding is a lot of those partners are also sort of morphing. So if you, they're not just one thing anymore. And so what we're doing is we're working with them, enabling them on our platforms, providing solid APIs that they can leverage, yep. transitioning or expanding the code, the skill sets of their workers, and then we're partnering them up with our business partners and with our ISVs and doing a lot of that matchmaking. And with, with ecosystem exchange, again, they'll now be able to take that to a digital format. So we're, we're seeing the whole wave of So you guys see it coming, you're on that wave. Yes. All right, yeah. real quick, to, to end this. I know we're short on time, but I would, Mandy, if you could just talk about what Susie, we, your leader, talked about on stage on the keynote. She mentioned DNA Center. Can you yes. just take a quick second 
Yes. Describe what that is, what's, why it's important, and impact yes. to the community. Yes, so we're really excited about DNA Center platform. Uh, DNA Center is the controller, kind of at the heart of all of our new enterprise networking software. So it sits on top of the devices, and it exposes a whole library of APIs that let you do assurance, policy, uh, you know, get device information, uh, would allow you to build kind of self-service ops models so you could give more power to your power users to get access to network resources, onboard new devices, things like that. So sets of services. Um, so it's APIs, and then okay. you can build the, the okay. services on top. And part of that is also the assurance, which Dave Geckler showed in, in his keynote, which we're really excited about. So in DevNet, we've been working to build all the resources around those APIs, and we have many code samples and code exchange. We actually have a community um, contribution sprint going on right now, and that's called Code Intent with DevNet, and it's all around DNA Center. It's asking developers to take a business intent and turn it into code, and close the loop with assurance and submit that back to, to DevNet. It's a real, real business process that. improvement with code. Yeah. So you're enabling that and slinging APIs around, having fun. Yes. Are you having fun? Definitely having fun. Our, yeah, we absolutely. Always have fun we always have fun. It's yeah. great I can say, working with you guys up close, it's been fun to work with you. And congratulations, you guys have worked really hard and built a very successful, growing ecosystem of developers and partners. Congratulations. Thank you, you guys Thank you. have helped. Thanks for supporting theCUBE, really <laughs> appreciate it. This is theCUBE, the DevNet team, talking about you know, back in the early days, 2014 when it started, now it's booming, one of the successful developer programs in the enterprise here. Cisco's really showing the path. It's all about the community and the ecosystems. theCUBE, of course, doing our share, broadcasting here live in Orlando at Cisco Live 2018. Be with, stay with us for more live coverage after this short break. <laughs>